Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I took the Terraform Associate Certification exam. And let me tell you, it was not an easy exam, but thankfully I passed. Yay. All right, so let me tell you a little bit more about how I prepared for it, what was on the exam and how it went through the process of taking the exam. So first, a little background about why I actually scheduled the exam. Through my job, we had a voucher for the Terraform Associate exam, and it was about to expire in two days. And I misunderstood what that meant. And instead of understanding that you can redeem it within two days, I understood it as you have to take your certification within two days. So I scheduled my exam, not knowing that I could have scheduled it for much later than that. So it was a very fun time in the past 48 hours or whatever, uh, trying to study and register and all that. Plus I really liked the whole, oh, let me register for the exam the day before. So this way I can't get out of it. I have to take it because I am very good at just backing out of things. And I figured if I schedule me my exam in a way that I cannot get out of it, then I will not get out of it. Uh, so I did that. I scheduled it and I did not get out of it. I had to take it. The most difficult part of all this was cleaning my desk and cleaning the room I'm in. And it's still not completely clean. You can see there's like a lot of crap in there. But um, the reason I had to clean is because during the exam, in order to take the exam, they're like, you need to have a clean workspace, nothing on the desk, no monitors, no nothing. So it was a lot of preparation for the cleaning uh, that was quite a weird thing, like having to prepare for the exam by cleaning your room. How often does that happen? That you, how clean your room is, is graded on a technology exam. But anyway, uh, I did it, cleaned everything. We're good. All right. So how did I prepare for this exam? Well, I worked on Terraform for work. Like I still work on Terraform at work. So I, had hands-on experience, deploying resources, working with other people on how to create resources and all that stuff. And that hands-on experience, I think is the key to the success. I, I would say it represents about 70, 75% of my success on the exam, because if you do things, if you actually work with it, if you actually have a problem to solve, and if you actually have a problem that's big enough that you actually have to work and create complicated infrastructure with Terraform, then you will see a lot of the cases of what you need to do. Now, that wasn't the only thing I did. I studied, I looked at the documentation, I read Rishab's notes. I actually, I'm going to put them right here in the comment section. Rishab's notes are a lifesaver. It is everything you need to know for the exam in one long, nice page. Um, it took me about, I would say 15, 20 minutes to read through everything and understand everything that is in there. He did such an amazing job. I cannot recommend those notes enough. It was great, very, very helpful. The other thing that helped me a lot to cement my knowledge is actually doing a stream teaching other people how to use Terraform and the link is also down there. Now that isn't something that most people consider learning, but if you are teaching other people, if you are actively, you know, trying to get a fundamental understanding of things so that you can get other people to understand and work with things that counts as studying. So teaching other people was also a great exercise in really consolidating my knowledge. 
All right, so the day of the exam, which is today, the day I'm recording this video. So what happened is I had my exam at noon. And before that, before noon, I basically spent the whole morning trying to clean up my desk, clean up my workspace so that it would pass the requirements for the exam, for the proctored exams online. You have to film your whole environment and you have to stay there and you have to put your phone away, no watch and all that stuff. So it's quite, um, quite a process. If you have a room that you have like clean with nothing on the walls, with nothing around, you are ready to go. Right. Uh, but if you don't have a fully clean space, you have to clean your space. It is part of the exam. You cannot take the exam if you don't have a clean space. Uh, if you've seen my videos for AZ 104 and 204, uh, again, links in the, the links in the description below. Uh, I was in the closet. I had nothing in there. It, it was barren. And so it was so much easier back then. It was like, yeah, no, no worries. Uh, but here it's a little bit busier as you can see in the background and you can't see all the junk behind me or under me that I'm hiding. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm a messy person. And so it is very difficult. It was the hardest part of the exam was cleaning my room. Okay. Now this is done. The room was clean. I basically took one hour of doing nothing. Uh, and it's fine if it's during the work day, which for me it is, it's during the work day. I took one hour to do nothing, you know, calm your mind, maybe watch some videos and stop studying altogether, right? There's a point where your brain will not learn anything else. And one hour before the exam is 100% that time. So stop cramming, stop studying and just relax, right? One hour, spend one hour relaxing, get in the mood. If you have to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom and all that stuff. So one hour before that was me, I actually spent the hours before that one hour studying and reviewing Rishab's notes and all that stuff, just to make sure that I was understanding everything correctly. All right. So now the exam. So the way it works when you do your computer exam is you basically take your computer, they say, all right, check into the exam. They install, you have to install a secure browser on your uh, laptop. You install it and it runs. I had trouble installing it because they were like, I'll oh, choose the install for me only option, but there was no install for me only option. I figured it out. Uh, but, uh, it, it was a little annoying, but oh, well, uh, on your computer, you have to close every single application. That is not that one application. Uh, you have to grant that one application, their secure, secure browser. Uh, permission to read your screen and then permission to look at your camera and audio test your setup. They say all is okay. Then what you have to do is scan your uh, license, your, your government issued ID, whatever that may be for me it was my driver's license and, um, you scan that and then they say, okay, take your laptop turn it 360 right with your camera to show like how it looks around, then turn it up and down, right? What's on the floor, what's in the ceiling. Um, then you have to show your workspace. And then at the end, you have to take your phone and put it far away behind you. You have to show them that you're putting it far away behind you so that they know that it's not with you. And once you've done all these like, camera, um, these videos that they ask you to do they you are done and you just wait for the proctor to review your documents and your videos and let you in to the exam. Now for me, it took over 20, 25 minutes for the proctor to let me into the exam, which was scary because I'm like, okay, am I going to have enough time? Is everything okay? Uh, I have, am I having issues? And they tell you, if you don't have uh, any response from the proctor after 15 minutes, just chat with them and be like, Hey, what's up? 
Uh, so I did that. So it was like, hey, what's up? And they're like, oh, we're still reviewing everything. Uh, and then they let me in. So my exam was at noon and I got into the exam at uh, 12.05. Uh, so it, it wasn't that bad. It was just uh, nerve wracking, right? You arrive half an hour early to the exam and it takes about 40 to 45 minutes to let you into the exam. So that was, that was, uh, that was unsettling, right? So not a fun thing. So be sure to arrive early because if I had arrived like at noon, that would have been even scarier because I would probably wouldn't have been in until like 1230, 130. So as soon as the day opened, which is half an hour before your exam, as soon as this opens, go there, get ready, and maybe you'll take the exam early, maybe not, but at least you know you did everything you could to be on time, and if they're late, you will still be on time. So do that. I highly recommend you arrive early. Now, in terms of the questions, all the questions I had were multiple choice, usually four options, and it wasn't that difficult. There, there are a lot of basic questions, and I said that I would not reveal the questions, so I'm not going to reveal the questions. And the the questions are not that difficult, and they appear very simple, but the difficulty is some of them are just worded in a way that is just hard to understand. There were a lot of questions that I could not understand. I was like, what is this question actually asking me for? And Either it was because I was not ready or didn't know, or because they were truly poorly worded questions. But overall, I would say most of them were okay. Uh, you can flag questions when you don't know the answers. And I flagged about 50% of the questions. I just had to go back and review like 50% of them where I was like, mm, I'm not sure. I remember there was one question where, the, where they were like, okay, which private endpoint can you get modules from or whatever? And they say public get, public thing, private thing, and private whatever. I was like, you know what? I think the, the public GitHub and public Terraform were the good answer. Then I was like, oh, you know, I, I went back and we read the question and they were asking for like private storage. So I switched my my things from public to private because, well, <laughs> if anything is public, it's it's not private. So uh, I highly recommend if you have like half a doubt, right, about the answers to the questions, I highly recommend you flag them at the end if you have time. Go back and check the questions, and don't spend too much time on all the questions because the the thing is you have. 57, I think 57 questions. So having those 57 questions can take a lot of time. And some of them are fairly obvious and very easy and others are convoluted and difficult. And also sometimes you actually get the answer to your questions in future questions. Uh, that didn't really happen in this exam for me, but I don't know what questions you're going to have if you take the exam, but sometimes you have the answer to your question in future questions. So it's worthwhile to just give your gut feeling for one question, move on and go back at the end or revisit the question later once you, you have a better idea of the question. And sometimes it's just good to step away from a question and a problem and revisit it with a fresh mind. So highly recommend you use the flag feature. I had roughly 15 minutes left on the exam when I was done answering all the questions. So I had about 15 minutes to go back and look at every single one of the flag questions and give uh, feedback, or give feedback and, and answer them. So I did change a few of my answers. Were they correct? I don't know because they don't tell you which answers you got right and which ones you got wrong. But um, I passed, so I guess I answered most of them correctly. So it's it's not bad. So one thing I like about the exam is that at the end, when you're done and you've answered all the questions, also at the end, there's also like questions that are not really related to the exam, like 
where do you work, how much experience do you have, and things like that. So you have that section at the end. Not a big deal, fairly quick to answer. So be sure you make time for these questions too, right? Um, so, but anyway, when you're done, they tell you you passed, you failed, and they tell you here's what was tested and here's how well you did. So there was uh, understand infrastructure as code, understand Terraform's purpose versus other infrastructure as code tools, understand uh, Terraform basics, use the Terraform CLI, interact with Terraform modules, navigate Terraform um, workflows, implement and maintain state, regenerate and modify configuration, and understand Terraform cloud and enterprise capabilities. So these are the things they tell you, and they also tell you what's the percentage of the questions you got right or wrong. My weakest point, my weakest point was understanding Terraform basics. So 57% of the questions were right. I, I did have a few questions, a lot of topics that were 100%, but yeah, <laughs> understanding the basics. I'm not that good. Uh, maybe I just uh, randomly managed to pass. So yeah, so overall, I would recommend taking that exam, just like any certification, right? They, I still don't think they're extremely valuable, but they could help. They could help you get a job and all that stuff, and they help validate your knowledge. Um, but it was a good way of validating your knowledge, and it wasn't that difficult. Uh, it was challenging, just like any other exam, but I don't think it was any more challenging than any other certifications I took. It was, I would say, on the middle side in terms of challenge, uh, but I think if I studied harder, if I spent more time studying, if I really dedicated time and did Udemy like I did with the other ones or took a class or whatever, I probably would have had a much better score than what I did. So I highly recommend you study. This is definitely not something you can pass without studying or at least having enough experience that you see all the use cases. Um, take it, do yourself a favor. I think this is, this is something that would really help your career if you wanna do DevOps and for sure as code or cloud engineering in general. So worth, worth completing and yeah, if you, if you really want to get into this, the easiest thing before the certification is to just work with it, right? Deploy your own infrastructure in uh, Terraform and all that. So yeah, it was a fun experience. And if you've passed yourself, if you've taken it or you need help or you have more questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. I will try my very best to answer them. Sometimes there's too many. Sometimes I'm bad at answering comments. I don't ignore anybody's comments. I just don't necessarily have time to answer them. But feel free to harass me and be like, Caroline, how did you do this? Or whatever. And I will come back and answer your questions. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.